Ujwal Sharma is a compilers hacker at iGalia. He is also working on TC39 standardization committee for JavaScript, V8 and Node.js core, collaborator, a TC39 delegate and an international speaker. Originally Ujwal is from India, where he studied computer science at JP Institute of Information Technology, NOIDA. He now lives in Spain, but he can tell a lot of interesting things about IT in India. I would say that most of them would, uh, yeah, definitely go for a university. Now, it, it depends on what kind of degree they go for. There's a few different ways you can approach this, right? Like there's the the bachelors in uh, technology, uh, which is like the more sort of traditional, professional, technical degree. There's also bachelors in engineering, in computer applications, in science with a computer's focus. So there's a couple of different degrees you can pursue. In my experience, it's way more rare for people to not have a degree and then apply for a technical role than the opposite. And uh, I, I get it. I mean, uh, given how the job market is, it's it's so hard uh, to just get a job in general. So to do it without a degree, it's even harder. Also, keep in mind that it's a very traditional in many ways and, and conservative country. So uh, especially a lot of like senior people, older people would, uh, you know, prefer for the employees to have a degree. So that sort of becomes a posturing game. Uh, then, I mean, when it comes to jobs, I, I, as I said, like there's three or four categories in which like uh, you could work. I, I would hope that a lot of Indians have different and, and high like aspirations, possibly in the third or the second category, but that most of the time doesn't meet, meet the ground reality, right? Like the, the truth of the matter is that at the end of the day, not many of them can get a job at like top big tech companies or even in startups, right? So they have to sort of settle for smaller companies, consultancies, and then they kind of, uh, uh, you know, make their way to our other companies, either through like, you know, just growing through their careers or, uh, you know, doing a master's, an MS or something. And then, you know, that would open up more opportunities for them. Is the competition among aspiring programmers in India strong? There is a lot of competition even before you become uh, become a programmer and an engineer, right? Like even the the level of competition that Indians face at the uh, uh, sort of entrance into university level, where they finish up high school and they they all give like a uh, exam for engineering entrance. It, it's called the joint entrance exam, uh, the JE, and uh, it, it is ridiculous. Like, I, I think that exam is basically cruelty. And <laughs> I, I had to give it, uh, my peers had to give it, my younger brother had to give it. And like, that is how things go in India with in, in terms of engineering education. I mean, I, I know a few people who have sort of figured out how to be an engineer or even just a programmer, uh, without giving that exam. But that's very, you know, few compared to the vast majority of like millions of people who give this exam every year. And so uh, just a score on this test determines which university you're going to get placed in. So uh, that, that can change a lot in terms of, you know, ground reality. I mean, yes, uh, there's all the typical things like yeah there's nobody can take away your hard work from you whatever like yes maybe i i worked hard despite being in a shitty university and so yes there's some truth to that but and and also obviously as i said like uh, the university professors and so on these structures are not really uh necessary one could say, or even like conducive to your education. Like they don't need, you don't need them or like they don't actually help you a lot when it comes to real world, uh, you know, knowing how to develop systems. But the the group of peers that you find at your university definitely does. So it's like, if you get placed in a, at a very uh, interesting university or a very uh you know, uh, 
an a, a university that is very appealing among programmers or people who are passionate about programming uh you are going to find a lot better uh peers at at your university and that can absolutely change everything i mean you have four years with with very talented people uh who are also interested in the same thing the possibilities are endless right Living in India, is it easy to become a freelancer for the international market? My understanding of the situation is that a lot of these like contractors from India that now we know like are are in the majority of the tech industry and like really dominate overall, uh they were born out of the the big Y2K disaster, right? Like Uh, overnight or maybe not overnight but you know very late into time the us realized that holy shit a lot of our software is not not just the us but you know like a lot of companies in the us and the rest of the world realized that a lot of our software is built with this y2k bug and now <laughs> the year is is here in a couple of months and we don't have actually the kind of resources to go out and fix everything right like not only is it too expensive for us it is basically impossible we don't have enough engineers to actually fix all of these bugs and so uh this was the time when the contractor class or like the uh freelancer class of programmers in india really like came onto the world stage because uh these huge indian companies that i said like hire like half of the millions of programmers every year so like you know they have they have a lot of employees they they really came into the center stage and they they were the ones who were going to promise uh american or or european or other clients all over the world that they are going to fix all of these y2k bugs in a uh you know basically joking amounts of time and 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 money and they did i mean they were able to hire engineers and and make them work in ways that were just not possible in the rest of the world so uh that sort of solidified their uh existence on the world stage right now like there there's a lot of companies all across the world for whom like just outsourcing their work to indian uh programmers it's not a, a thing that they need to think about it's something that's that they've been doing for years uh when it comes to actually the the programming uh sort of prowess of these programmers it, it can be complicated right like it's it's possible that in many cases they get the job done and on time and uh you know with whatever resources they have access to but I mean, they it's not hard to argue you that they are not the best programmers and like they are not optimizing for cleanliness they're not optimizing for readability and so a lot of them are are just throwing stuff uh, at the wall and seeing what works and so there's a lot of like terrible code especially a lot of these programmers have been writing predominantly the kind of like uh languages that is conducive to this kind of bar- boilerplate uh i don't want to uh, call any shots here but i mean it's java and .net so <laughs> java and .net have this ability to just like uh grow into a, a big garbage dump of code where it's like yes everything works but uh, it makes no sense the way it's written down and so yeah I, i think this kind of interaction between the programmers and the work that was being given to them in which case like as i said right like a lot of these companies just got rid of their it departments so instead of engineers delegating work to other engineers in another country and like evaluating their work now they they got rid of everyone and like you know the manager the engineers everything is on the indian side and now uh there's non technical people who are just giving you some task and who are being you know very unreasonable in some ways or something and then they also do not have the capability of of actually uh analyzing the results so uh, uh you get a lot of code that might work but um uh, that is just very inefficient or or unoptimized or just generally not a good uh style to look at right 
Is it possible in India to live in a small town and work for a big company remotely? I think you would have been surprised by how uncommon that was until not so long ago. But uh, well, fortunately or unfortunately, we all live in this post-COVID era. So now it has become more of a reality, obviously with better internet services coming to the villages, better sort of infrastructure in general coming to to smaller cities and villages, as well as, you know, the emphasis of office culture sort of reducing among the more traditional companies. Uh, Definitely like startups are are more uh, flexible and happy with these ideas of work from home. But yeah, a lot of the traditional or established companies in India still have a very strong office culture. And so uh, it's it's still not the most common, but I, I think it is very rapidly becoming a, an accepted idea sort of post-COVID. I think that India is a country, okay, now, now like again, uh, my criticism, but also like my subjective opinion and criticism, obviously, I think that India is a country that has struggled with this uh, a lot through the years, but especially with this moment and with tech, right? Uh, the difference in opportunities, the difference in infrastructure, the difference in mindset and culture in everything among the the small cities, the villages even, and the huge cities, the the cosmopolitan cities, which are basically like uh, trying to to mimic uh, European or American cities in every way, right? Like uh, in terms of culture, mindset, infrastructure, everything, they can feel like being in two different countries completely, right? And, And so with the younger generation, with ambition, with a lot of these things, people have really no options uh, than to leave their village and, and to go settle in a huge city. And so you'd see that in a any big city, especially in like some of the newer, rougher cities, like uh, in the outskirts of Delhi or even within Delhi or like, you know, Mandalore, you would just go there and find like a huge amount of young people because they have moved from various places to cities and also just like India is a country with a large amount of young people, right? Like if you compare the the sort of age split of countries like India or, you know, any country in South Asia with European countries, you would realize like India has just like a, a lot of young people comparatively. So there's all of these young people and they have good reasons, I would say, not to stay in the villages. There's no opportunities and there's no infrastructure to support them. Uh, so I think when I, somebody like me, uh, sort of born and raised in a huge mega city, coming and living in a smaller city in Europe, I I kind of am sad by that. Like I, I wish that India had developed her... Uh, you know, smaller cities and villages in a way with infrastructure that allowed people to stay there and to retain like their homes, their identities and and so on, their culture. But as of right now, I I feel like there's a huge drive for anyone who has any ambition and any sort of, uh, you know, also while obviously conforming to the standard, right? Like, uh, obviously, if you are uh, somebody who trusts in themselves and have a alternate plan, you can obviously stay wherever you want or even go to a village and start something completely new. But for the vast majority of people, for education, for employment, for any opportunities, they would just move to big cities. And so, like, cities such as Delhi are over 35 million people now. It's it's huge. 